were a little concerned for a while because we had a feedback loop where the batteries were powering the inverter, which was charging the batteries, which was powering the inverter, and it made things go. <laughs> got a generator, we got batteries, but what we really need is some solar panels to keep things cranking all the time. So uh, my brother Roy told me what to do, set them up right now, have no idea what I'm doing, but. The one thing that's caused me more stress than anything else in our RV adventure, smelled smoke down here, was trying to install solar sort of by myself. You're not smart enough to do it. And by you, I mean Trevor. This is for sure not a how to install solar in your RV video. Unless you have a competent solar wizard helping you. As a trained professional in solar installation, I'm just gonna do this all by myself. I have no help whatsoever. Yeah, everybody else is useless. Nobody can help the master. I'd suggest you just have a professional install it. I made so many mistakes that could have ended in disaster. You hear that whirring sound? That's my inverter. As I share my journey of stress, anxiety, and solar, I'll sprinkle in the things that I learned so that maybe you can avoid some of the mistakes that I made. Stick around to the end and I'll show you my entire solar system in like 60 seconds. How many solar panels do you need? Well, there's calculators and smart people that'll help you figure that stuff out, but my rule of thumb is as many as you can fit on your roof. That was a little sketchy. I wouldn't recommend doing it that way. I started out with two, but I need more juice. So I'm putting these two up there. Know this, when you order these solar panels, and I do recommend them from Canadian Solar, they're kind of a, kind of a good deal. I think I got, there was a deal of like 165 bucks each for 315 watt solar panels. It doesn't come with the hardware. They don't know what you want to mount it on, like your, your car, your truck, your, your RV, your house. So you gotta buy the mounting brackets too. I'll link the ones I got down below. They work fine. To install the panels, you simply screw them into the roof, which is plywood uh -huh. covered with this rubber layer. And you should add goo that you can use on the roof of an RV. Mm -hmm. Just a little caulking gun mm -hmm. and go. My smart brother Roy, help me get the other three panels up here. I got five panels on the roof now. Once your solar panels are mounted to the roof, you need to connect them to each other, either in serial or parallel, depending on your situation. It matters a lot, so make sure you understand this. We went with parallel. You connect them to each other with solar connectors. You need a crimping tool to do this properly. If you cheap out and try to use pliers, it will not work and the connections will fail. Plug this panel in to the connectors, 34 volts. Plug this directly into the wires that go right down there, zero volts. I don't know why. The connections, they matter. Apparently, my hair doesn't. And uh, what have you been doing like all day long? Becoming an expert in solar connections. Stuff I knew nothing about yesterday. Now I'm better at it than Roy, because his connections sucked. He's using freaking pliers instead of a crimper. Don't, don't tell anyone. And then you gotta get the wires through the roof. The scary part is drilling into the roof and drilling here where there's lots of wires, but I'm just gonna do it and hope that there's no wires right there. There's hardly ever any wires right there. So here we go. Ah! Anything up there? Can't see nothing. I guess just keep going. Pulling cable, look at those guns. Holy cow, he's pulling cable like a professional cable pulling solar heating electrician. You're a monster, Roy. When we started this solar installation venture here, I had a full head of thick hair, and now I, I have to wear a hat, and my self-esteem has plummeted. There is, there is one thing you can do to help my mental health. Just hit that, that like button and subscribe and tell a million of your closest friends. Please, please do that right now. It's like, it's, it's all I got, man. So here we got these connected. We're getting power now. And I have no idea if this is the right way to do it. We took that mucky muck tape and we just ran it along there and we're gonna seal it up down there um, with that goopy stuff. So right way, no idea. Will it work? I think so, we're getting power. What am I doing now? Sitting, yeah, in the restroom, installing solar, duh. Here's what you do. You stick holes right here so you can mount some controllers and stuff. That's what I'm doing. And I'm pretty much just doing whatever this guy tells do you me have to any? do. The bad thing about RVs is that they're made of bubble gum and tin foil. The good thing about RVs is that they're made of bubble gum and tin foil, so that if you need to make holes for your solar stuff, you're just cutting through bubble gum and tin foil. In this hole in the bathroom, we just ran up this cable right here, and boom, plugs into the back of the battery meter. And over here, we ran this cable. This is the inverter. It used to be in the garage, which is silly, for under the thing. 
we just ran it up an existing hole right there, and boom, we're ready to make, make solar power, save the world, one panel at a time. This is a controller. The power from the solar goes here, and then it sends it from here to the battery. Our cable would go into the controller. It's that easy. And it's the only good kind, it's an MPPT. All of the other kinds are junk, don't get it. Don't do it. MPPT controller. I, I just connected that, but see how it's all floppity? I'm guessing that this is how you do it. Let's see if this works. I'm not sure if that's how you do it. You probably use a propane torch or something, but it seemed to, seemed to kind of work. Extreme fire hazard. You should be safe with these. That is a power converter. It's supposed to charge your batteries. That one works for lead acid batteries, the crap ones I had before. But not from a new lithium ion, so I'm putting a new power converter in. Is that what it's called? Yeah, power converter. That is my 1000 watt inverter. It's inadequate. I want to power my entire system. So we're installing this 3500 watt inverter, which will power probably everything except the air conditioner. And I know you're going to Google how to run an air conditioner on solar. Just save yourself time. Don't, it's not time. Wait, wait a few years. It's not the time to do it. These are zero gauge wires. You need heavy duty wires in order to connect your batteries to your inverter. And I'm making these guys because they're just raw wires and apparently you need to uh, melt those thingers on there. And I got something better than a match now. Woo doggy. You got batteries, then solar. Solar's last to connect and first to disconnect. So you should have a solar shutoff, Ugh, which I don't. I just disconnect things, but heck, I've learned so much. Here's my confusion. This is supposed to tell me how many amps this is producing right now, and it's zero. This one drove me nuts, but I eventually figured it out. Volts times amps equals watts. Electrical power is measured in watts. On a sunny day, the sun will hit your solar panels and your battery meter will register the voltage. If your batteries are not full, that energy will be transferred from the solar panels, through the cables, through the charge controller, into the batteries. The energy traveling through those cables is known as current and current is measured in amps. When your batteries are charging, you'll see a value for both volts and amps. When your batteries are full, if the sun is out, there will be a value for volts, but amps will be zero because there is no current, no energy going into the batteries. So it's totally normal to see zero amps going into your batteries when your batteries are full. I'm pretty sure that I could live on just batteries and uh, solar if I never needed a microwave or air conditioning. Like it's going up. Like I've been running the fridge and my computer and a fan and junk all day long. And we ran stuff, you know, ran the fridge and stuff all night. And I was working late at night and the batteries just keep getting more and more charged no matter what I do. The good news is we're hundred percent charged according to this, if it's accurate, I have no idea if it is. Um, it was never calibrated, so I'm curious about that. Yeah, you should read the instructions because we don't want it to explode. I don't know what the instructions are, we're screwed. Trevor, huh? what a novel idea, read the instructions. <laughs> Stop talking to me. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I guess it wasn't actually at 100% because look at it now, it says it's zero. So I don't have any idea. This just happened magically. It's because it's at 12.8 volts, which is time to not drain them anymore, I guess. Hey Trevor, what you doing? Figuring out my batteries. Wait, how are you figuring them out? I'm reading the directions like I always do. <laughs> yeah. I've had the inverter off since last night and I just looked over here and it's now showing ridiculous voltage for the battery, 100% charged. And this is showing battery overload, I think. The generator just spontaneously shut off, I assume because it charged the battery too much and didn't want to hurt the battery. So I don't know what to do, man. What are you doing? <sighs> Looking for an instruction manual. Also our batteries just almost exploded, so we're trying to figure out what that was about. Trevor, <laughs> who knew that owning an RV would be the key for Trevor to read instruction manuals. The circuit breakers are good on the generator, and I've got voltage coming here, 
but nothing happens when I prime or start it. What does that mean? We're leaving Bear Lake a couple days early because I did a dummy. I hooked up a solar panel that I was gonna put on the roof, hadn't got to yet, directly to a battery without a solar charge controller. And that fried uh, half my electrical system and probably my generator. So now we're going to try to get some of that fixed. I'm an idiot, don't, don't be like me. How's today going for you? Um, at least I have a plan. Yesterday I just had stress. And Trevor has a drill in his hand. Oh no, in this mess. We've made more progress, which I'm not starting to wonder if that means anything. <laughs> you, you have five solar panels that are hooked up. They might work, we haven't tested them yet because there's no sun. <laughs> that may or may not work. You have a refrigerator that does probably work in a couple minutes. And other really great things, I think. <laughs> the, we don't have a generator that works yet. So I thought I'd come here and try to get some warranty work. They're super helpful. But uh, they don't have a tech in, so I gotta find somebody else to help me get my generator going again. Bye, Abby. Hope you're okay. We had to leave Abby here because our brand new generator died and hopefully they can fix it today. Dude, it would be really nice to have a place to stay tonight. So uh, please, please help us birdies, please. This is pretty much our entire solar setup in 60 seconds or so. Over the course of weeks or months, we ended up with five 315 watt solar panels on the roof with the main wiring taped down with this RV sealing tape shoved down this hole and sealed with nothing more than RV goop. Yeah, I know it ain't pretty and it's probably all wrong. The wiring runs down this wall in the bathroom, through the floor, and into this Ep Ever charge controller. Solar goes in right here. Remember, you disconnect solar first and reconnect solar last. The charge controller then sends the energy being generated by the sun to the batteries through these cables. Which batteries, you might ask, and how many? We have two of these Renogy lithium iron phosphate batteries. Yes, they're lithium ion batteries. They're 100 amp hours each. Why only two? Well, because they're like 800 bucks, and where else would I put one? More would for sure be better. Forest River didn't do us any favors in placement. One's on this side, and the other one's on that side. I'm sure there's a way to get more batteries in here, but, uh, it would probably take welding or something. The batteries then send the juice via these very thick zero gauge cables to this 3500 watt inverter that powers just about everything in the whole place. Note that the battery and the inverter, which is right up there, are very close to each other. That's on purpose. You wanna use thick cables and have them really close. How many batteries and which type should you get? As far as which type, lithium ion, while they cost way more upfront, they are way more efficient and effective and overall just way better in the long run. As far as how many, uh, they're, they're expensive. So pretty much whatever you can afford and safely fit in your RV, they need ventilation. But you can talk to one of those smart guys or check one of those online calculators to determine exactly what your energy needs are. I mean, it's gonna be an estimate. And what can you power with batteries? With just two 100 amp hour lithium ion batteries, we can power everything in the RV pretty much all day and all night, except for the air conditioning, the microwave, and the electric fireplace. Heaters are a huge energy suck. Even if you just plug a portable one into your outlets, it's gonna drain your batteries really fast. That is a transfer relay switch. It came with the RV. It chooses between shore power and generator power to power the whole RV. I added a second identical transfer relay switch to choose between whatever that one spits out and solar power. And I plugged this one into the electrical panel that powers almost the entire RV. Figuring all of that transfer relay switch stuff created a whole new set of issues that Probably took two years off my life. It, it was a pain. These are all the gauges we installed. This is the battery monitor that came with the charge controller, but we were told it was inadequate and that we needed to get this thing, which is a Renogy battery monitor that's supposedly way better. And this is the inverter on off switch. When we're not connected to shore power. We turn that baby on. And these gauges are all right here, conveniently located on the opposite side of the bathroom wall. I put links to most of that stuff in the description below if you're interested in seeing what we did. We probably didn't do it right, but it seems to work. If you're going to do it, just dude, be careful and make sure you've got a uh, solar wizard you can consult. Also, thanks baby brother Roy. There is no chance I could have done this without you. I would never ever do it again, but I'm, I'm glad I did it this time. 
just picked up the generator from this place. Birdies, they were super cool to get me in. And uh, let's let's see if it works. They they had to replace the control board, so of course it works. They fix it. Let's check and make sure. Hit this button right here. Hear that? That's a sweet sound of enough power to run your air conditioner or microwave. Whew, dude, this, it never ends. There is always something with this RV. <gasps> I mean, I would say that that was as flawless as it possibly could get. It was perfect. I in think, every way. I think that I wish we may be the best solar technicians in the world.